How's it going, everyone? So I have an important update for you in the California Magazine band case, Duncan v. Bonta. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that California's ban on so-called large capacity magazines violates our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also want to thank one of the sponsors of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. SDI's faculty is comprised of professionals with decades of industry experience, and SDI's programs are designed to combine modern learning methods, hands-on training options, and the flexibility of online education. Through SDI, you can get an Associate of Science in Firearms Technology degree and a Certificate in Firearms Technology. If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute might be the good option for you. So if you're interested, find out more by visiting SDI's website at www.sdi.edu. Thank you again, SDI, for sponsoring this video. Also, I want you to know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, I have an update for you in the California Magazine ban case, Duncan v. Bonta. In a prior video, I had mentioned that the plaintiffs in this case filed an unopposed motion to stay the mandate from the en banc panel, until the Supreme Court can address this issue, or in the alternative, an administrative stay until they can seek a stay from the Supreme Court. Well, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has now granted that stay. Now, before we jump into the implications of the stay that they granted, I just wanna mention that although I am a licensed and practicing attorney in the state of California, I am not your attorney, this is not legal advice. If you need actual legal advice, I recommend you reach out to someone in your local area to give you that advice. Now, for those of you who are not aware, Duncan v. Bonta, previously known as Duncan v. Becerra, involves the possession of so-called large capacity magazines in the state of California. California Penal Code Section 32310 bans the buying, selling, possession, etc. of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds by ordinary citizens in the state of California. This law was challenged in the district court before Roger T. Benitez or St. Benitez, and he issued a ruling that found that this law was a violation of our Second Amendment rights. This ruling is what led to what is known as Freedom Week in the state of California. During a week period of time, tens of millions of magazines were purchased by California gun owners. After that week period, the ruling by Benitez said that those in lawful possession of Freedom Week magazines could maintain them without fear of prosecution. The enforcement of the law against the possession of these magazines was put on hold until the final determination in the Duncan case. We also saw the DOJ have to issue an order to all law enforcement in the state that those lawfully in possession of these magazines that they purchased during Freedom Week could not be prosecuted. However, that hasn't stopped some law enforcement in some areas from seizing these magazines and also from trying to arrest individuals who are in lawful possession of these magazines. For example, we talked about a prior case on this channel, that is the Peng Yang case that took place in Tulare County, where a man was arrested and charged for being in possession of one of these magazines. The good thing is that eventually on review, the court and the law enforcement officers there, the prosecutors, realized that he was in lawful possession of this magazine and stopped the prosecution of him because of Judge Benitez and the injunction he had put in place. Now, of course, the state of California did not like the Benitez ruling, so they appealed the decision up to the Ninth Circuit. A three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit reviewed the decision of the lower court and agreed that Judge Benitez was correct that this was a violation of our Second Amendment rights. Well, after that, after California lost again, they didn't like that, so they sought a review or a rehearing before the Ninth Circuit en banc panel, and that is a review by 11 judges in the Ninth Circuit. The en banc panel heard the case and issued their ruling, finding that California's magazine ban does not violate Second Amendment rights. In reaching that decision, they used the Ninth Circuit's flawed two-step approach and found that under intermediate scrutiny, the law was still constitutional, that it wasn't a violation of Second Amendment rights. The en banc panel therefore reversed the decision of Judge Benitez and ordered the case be remanded back down to him, but only to enter judgment in favor of the state of California. The way the Ninth Circuit does that is by issuing a mandate back down to the lower court. Once the Ninth Circuit issues a mandate, Benitez would have been forced to rule in favor of the state of California and remove his injunction, which currently is what is protecting the lawful possession of Freedom Week magazines and pre ban magazines. Now, one solution to try to prevent the mandate from happening is for the plaintiff to seek a stay of mandate pending petition for a writ of certiorari up to the Supreme Court. And that is exactly what they did. On top of that, the state of California did not oppose that motion to stay the mandate pending Supreme Court review. The goal of a stay of mandate is to simply just maintain the status quo until a higher court here, the Supreme Court, can review the issue. Well, we now have received an order from the Ninth Circuit, which is granting the stay of mandate. 
Now the order reads, Appellee's unopposed motion to partially stay issuance of the mandate is granted. The mandate is partially stayed for a period of 150 days from the date of this order. If appellees file a petition for certiorari in the United States Supreme Court during the period of the partial stay, the partial stay shall continue until final disposition by the Supreme Court. So the Ninth Circuit will be staying the mandate on their ruling for at least 150 days. So that would be about, I believe, until about May 19th of 2022. However, the likelihood is that that date will simply be irrelevant because the Duncan side, the plaintiffs here, will be seeking a petition for certiorari before the Supreme Court. That is the next logical step. That means that the stay will remain in place as long as it takes for Supreme Court to finally reach a final disposition of the petition. If the Supreme Court ultimately decides to take up review of this case, of this issue, then a stay would remain in place for that period of time when the Supreme Court is reviewing the case. If they deny the petition, then the stay would end at that point once they deny the petition for review. If they put the case on hold until the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case is decided, then the stay of mandate would remain in place as long as the case is on hold because the Supreme Court has not simply decided on what to do with the petition. Really, the likelihood of this is this will all hinge on what happens with the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association decision. Many of us are expecting a pro to a decision, and that decision could impact cases like this one here, Duncan, and other ones like the assault weapons ban case in California, the Rupp case, the Miller case, other cases as well like the Rody ammunition ban case in the state of California. Once the Supreme Court issues their decision in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case, that will give us a good idea of what they may do with some of these other cases, maybe even Duncan, if it's put on hold. But the most important thing right now for those of you who purchase magazines during Freedom Week is that a stay of mandate has been granted. That means it is still lawful to be in possession of those pre-ban and Freedom Week magazines. That fact will likely not change for a while since a stay of mandate will be in place for as long as it takes for the Supreme Court to get to this case, essentially. So this is generally a very good thing. We all knew that this case would eventually have to make its way up to the Supreme Court and maybe be resolved by the Supreme Court. The best case scenario was for the status quo of the possession of Freedom Week magazines to stay the same until the Supreme Court actually decides this case or kind of takes up this issue or maybe issues a different opinion that might actually change how the Ninth Circuit en banc panel ruled in this case. But after all this, if you still don't understand, because of the stay of mandate, right now, if you lawfully purchase Freedom Week magazines during that week period of time, you can still be in lawful possession of them because Judge Benitez's injunction is still in place. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. So thank you so much to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, who's hit the notification bell. You guys are directly impacting these videos, directly impacting this channel, helping me to reach more people than I could have ever thought. And that is all because of you guys. So if you don't have a comment in mind, just comment down below that you're commenting to feel the algorithm. And also if you're a longtime lurker or a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber and I'll make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation built by arm scholars, this nation will maintain by arm scholars.